going on, everyone? So right now, the Lakers look like an absolute mess, right? They just look like an organization that doesn't have a clear direction. There's all these constant reports that are coming out. Lakers want the depth. No, they want the star. No, they want this. No, they want that. Uh, the coaching search. Lakers still don't have a head coach. And it's like, what are they going to do? The draft is like 10 days away or 11 days away. And it's like, you know, what are they going to do with the head coach? Don't you want your head coach to be involved in the draft process? Don't you want your head coach to be involved in this and that? They go after Dan Hurley. Dan Hurley goes, ah, no, I don't want the Lakers, right? And it's just, I get the perception right now. Even Gary Vitti, right? Legendary Lake trainer, right? Kobe guy. He's even coming out and like, man, yeah, it's just hard to watch the Lakers right now. But yes, at the moment, it does look messy. It looks like, you know, it's just chaos right now and the Lakers just don't know what they're going to do. You know, they're a mom and pop shop. They, you know, don't spend money. They they don't have the money to compete with these other organizations, even though they make, you know, 10 billion a year or whatever it is, right? Like, it's just, I get the idea. I get the perception, but it's also June, right? And there is a lot that can happen between now and June. And yes, it'd be nice to get a win. I've even talked about it. It's like, man, this is like the the, the greatest worst hits <laughs> for the Lakers. The Celtics are probably gonna win the championship, right? We don't have a head coach. I, I'm on board with the frustrations right now. I, and look, Gary Vitti isn't wrong. It is hard right now to, to kind of look at the situation we're in and just look at the roster and it's like, ah, this roster isn't really a, a contending team. The West is only getting better. Teams are only getting better, right? Can, can LeBron and Anthony Davis, can they still carry a team like they could back in 2020? LeBron's only getting older. Is LeBron even going to stay? Is he going to leave? Right? I get that. But I talk about this a lot, right? Letting things play out, letting things unfold, allowing to see what is the end result. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. And right now everything looks chaotic, but we don't know what's going on behind the scenes, right? The coaching situation. I've said, I said from day one, I didn't believe Dan Hurley was coming to the Lakers. I said it, I got hate about it, people were telling me, I mean, I got comments saying I wasn't even a real Laker fan because I didn't believe that Dan Hurley was coming. No, I just looked at the situation and was like, this doesn't make sense, doesn't add up, why would he leave? And guess what? One of us was right, right? And look, I would have loved Dan Hurley if he would have came. I just believe that the Lakers, I don't think the Lakers even really thought they were going to get him. I think that that was just a distraction. Now, I could be completely wrong. This is just my guess. This is just my opinion, right? But for a month and a half, all we heard was J.J. Redick, J.J. Redick, J.J. Redick, J.J. Redick, right? And there was all the talks leading into the NBA Finals. And then on the day the NBA Finals happens, game one, we get the news about Dan Hurley. Huh. Huh. The timing is a little off, and supposedly the Lakers were talking to him for like months, which by the way, the reports didn't make sense, right? They, supposedly the Lakers were in conversations with Dan Hurley for like a month, but then reports came out saying that no, this all, you know, uh, uh, conspired the last like week or two when they the Lakers found out that Dan Hurley was still in contract negotiations, and even if it did happen for like a month, they waited like a month to have a face-to-face sit-down conversation with him about the offer, right? I think personally, if they could have gotten Dan Hurley, I think that they would have gotten Dan Hurley, right? But they offered him, you know, 11 and a half million or whatever it was, right? I think that the Lakers knew, okay, JJ Redick is our guy. We can't hire him till after the NBA finals, right? Out of respect, if we can deflect the conversation also gives us kind of a get out of jail free card because what happened? It got released the day of the NBA finals that JJ Redick was going to go and commentate on. Oh, look over here, right? Don't worry about JJ and ESPN and you know, the NBA finals, right? We're talking about Dan Hurley now. And all of the conversation, all of the narrative was on Dan Hurley. And all of the focus was on that for like three games of the NBA finals, right? And then you saw Dan Hurley reject the Lakers. So what do the Lakers get to do now? Now they get to hire J.J. Redick, which now the conversation you're seeing shift back to J.J. Redick, and it's like J.J., J.J., J.J. again, right? But they were able to kind of smokescreen it for a little bit, and then now they can go hire J.J. Redick and be like, well, what do you want us to do, right? Who else are we supposed to hire, right? Like, you know, we tried to get Dan Hurley, but he didn't want to come, right? And again, this may be just my tinfoil hat on conspiracy idea. I could be completely and utterly wrong. 
But I think if the Lakers hire J.J. Redick, I think my theory comes in a, is a lot more believable now. Now, look, maybe the Lakers come out of left field. Maybe they hire, you know, Sam Cassell, or maybe it is James Borrego, right? I, we don't know. I don't know. I'm not an insider. I'm not talking to anybody. It's just what... Just looking at the situation, evaluating the situation, the timing of the situation, everything, it's just really suspect, right? So, to me, I believe that the Lakers have their head coach. I think that they know who their head coach is going to be. I think that they've probably already had conversations. J.J. Redick was supposed to meet with the Lakers this weekend. At the time of recording this video, we don't know if he has yet or not, right? But I imagine that they're going to. I think that that conversation is going to be, hey, here's how much we're going to give you. I think it's going to be the finalization because this final series is probably over, you know, Monday, right? So I think come Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe by the weekend, J.J. Redick will be announced as the head coach. Again, I could be wrong, but I think that that's what this new conversation is going to be. Here's how much we're going to give you. I mean, there were reports that the Lakers were interviewing candidates for being the assistant head coach. You don't do that unless you know who your head coach is. You're not going to interview assistants and and insult guys that could potentially be your head coach like James Borrego unless you already know who your head coach is going to be. It just it doesn't add up. Like it doesn't make sense unless they know JJ Reddick's going to be the head coach and I mean we got reports that they believe he's the next Pat Riley. Like you just don't throw that out there unless like that's something, right? Like so I just think J.J. Redd is going to be head coach. So I think we already have our head coach. Right now, all the chaos, all the scramble, all the, oh, you know, this this is just a disaster. Lakers. I think that they do, and I think that they always have. And so that's why there's not this concern about what are we going to do. I mean, there's talks about the draft, right? Like, the Lakers aren't even working out picks at 17. They've worked out a couple guys. They've worked out, I think, four guys that could uh, realistically be a 17th pick. They've worked out, like, 15 or whatever, but... The other guys have been, you know, the 55th to, like, undrafted guys. So, I just, again, going off the information we have, I believe they already have their head coach locked up, and he's ready to go as soon as this finals is over, and I think it's going to be J.J. I was saying that even when the Dan Hurley news came out. I was like, I think it's going to be J.J. Redick. Again, maybe I'm wrong. I'm wrong all the time. It happens, right? But I think it's going to be J.J. Redick. And then I think that the Lakers are going to trade the 17th pick. There's talks about them trading up, right? There's talks about them trading back, but if you read the report from Jake Fisher, which I did a video on it on uh, the Lakers Show channel, as the Lakers Show, um, I, if you read the article, it wasn't that like the Lakers are like a lot of people are taking it and running with the oh Lakers are trying to trade up in the draft. No, that's not what the article said. The article says that the Lakers are basically looking at every option. Right? They're looking at trading the 17th pick. They're looking at moving down. They're moving at looking at moving up. Right? They're just doing their due diligence as they should. Right? But unless you can move into the top 10, right, which I just don't think is realistic, it doesn't really make sense. Right? The, the drop off from like 11 to 17 is really marginal. Like you're just looking, you're hoping to hit that prize. I think ultimately what happens is the Lakers end up trading that pick. If they do move up, like, it's probably from, like, 17 to, like, 13. It's probably, like, you know, Ron Holland is still available. Let's go get him because that's somebody that the Lakers worked out and somebody that the Lakers are really high on. Maybe they want to go and get a guy like that for their future. That could be a possibility. That's something that could happen. But I think more likely than not, they're going to go trade that pick. You know, there is the, the argument I've seen people throw out of like, you know, why would you trade up in such a weak draft? Well, you can make the argument if there's somebody that you really like because this is such a weak draft, it would be cheaper than it would be in other years, right? So say you want to move up to the 12th pick, right? That might take like a future first and maybe a second on top of this year's pick to go move up, you know, five plus spots. Or it might take somebody like a Rui Hachimura or something like that to move up that many spots, right? But in this draft, it might not take, it might take a couple seconds. It might take, you know, it, it will give you the 17 pick and give you two or three seconds because the draft isn't as looked at as, as highly as it is in other years. To me, a lot can happen. Right now, it looks bleak. Right now, it's frustrating. Right now, it's like, you know, what, like, what are we going to do? We got eliminated in the first round. Like, the guys didn't show up. Right? It's like, it's just, it's been this, you know, just train wreck after train wreck after train wreck after train wreck. I get it. And it is frustrating, right? But again, it's it's June, 
right? We, we haven't even entered the draft. We haven't even, even entered free agency. Who knows? Like, what if the Lakers pull off some great trades? What if the Lakers sign some quality free agents, right? Like, you know, we could be looking in two, three months from now and going, man, like the Lakers, let's go, right? Like, you know, they, they landed, you know, DeJounte Murray and Alex Caruso or something, and and we signed Valanchunas, and, you know, like, man, this roster's really shaping up, right? Like, and we, we you know, whatever, right? There's a million things that could happen between now, right? Like, and even J.J. Redick, when he gets hired, right? Like, yes, there's concern. There's definitely concern of, like, is he going to be able to do the job? But what if he is good, right? Like, people are just so quick to write him off. Look at the top head coaches in the league right now. Right, Eric Spolstra was in the film room. Ty Lue was just chilling. Right, like you just you look at guys like if Steve Kerr was a, fa- a failed GM and uh, sports commentator. Right, like it's just it's one of those things where it's like you don't know. Every coach is a gamble. Right, I just think JJ Redick is the highest upside gamble. So to me, it's like take the risk on the highest upside. They're all gambles. No one really has experience. Even like James Borrego doesn't have like this plethora of experience. Right, he had a good, he had a good stint with Charlotte, but you know the expectations also weren't as high. And you know he is there was a million factors that go into that that don't factor into the Lakers. So you know again, it's just. I get the frustration. I get the chaos. I get why Gary Vitti's coming out and saying that stuff. Like I do. I understand it. I I feel the same way at times. But taking a step back and just evaluating, going, oh, it's June, right? Like let's the, the NBA Finals. The season isn't even officially over. Like let's let things finish. Let's let things unfold and let's see where this goes before we just assume. The Lakers are going to be a total disaster mess. And look, maybe it does, right? Maybe the Lakers end up doing nothing and, you know, we're not even a playoff team next year. I don't know. Maybe LeBron leaves. I don't know, right? But it's like I'm just one of those people that I'm willing to let things play out. Let's see what the end result is rather than assuming we know what the end result will be, right? Because a lot can happen between now and October when the season starts, right? So, you know, it's a long way away. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass the question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you agree with me? Do you think like, yeah, just like it's June. Let things play out. Let's wait and see how things unfold. Do you think like, yeah, JJ Reddick is going to be the head coach? Do you think no? Like this is this is disaster. Lakers are a mess. You know, they're going to fall apart. Again, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one. Thank you.